In this session, we're going to take a look at the very fundamentals of vector. What is vector? I'm going to go ahead and create a very basic vector object here in my CorelDRAW workspace. I'm going to do that with the Bezier tool. I'm going to come over here in the toolbar to the freehand tool. I'm going to click and come down to the Bezier tool. I'm going to left click one time and create a node. I'm going to move over here to the center of the page, left click again and create another node. Now what I have is I have two nodes with one line segment connecting them. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click again and create a third node. Now I'm going to go to my shape tool which is directly underneath my pick tool and you'll see my properties bar change here. I'm going to bring that down into my workspace right above the, the vector line that I just created. Now as soon as I select something here you'll notice changes in the properties bar. Click here all of a sudden I have the ability to delete this node. You'll notice that if I click here in the center now I have the ability to add a node. That's because Corel typically adds nodes from going from the right to the left. In other words it's not going to add a node here but it will here. If I click here click plus it's going to add a node. I'll hit control Z. I'm going to click on this line segment here and you'll notice some things change here. I can convert this to a curve and I can change some other settings. I could go to a smooth node or a symmetrical node as you can see there. Now let's take a look at how we work and manipulate. Work with and manipulate lines and nodes. All I need to do is with my shape tool. It's not going to work with the pick tool. I'm not going to be able to edit with the pick tool but if I double click on my object with the pick tool I will get my shape tool left click, hold down and drag, and I've just moved that node. I can lasso two nodes, three nodes, ten nodes, however many, left click, hold down release, and move them. Now all of these lines and nodes have some properties associated with them and we want to be aware of that when we're working with vector. For instance, this straight line segment here is set up as a line, but now that I've clicked on it and selected it, I could convert it to a curve in the properties bar, or I could right click on it and select convert to curve right here to curve. Now you notice that since we've gone from a line segment to a curve we can left click and begin to change the shape of that line using these control handles that come off the nodes. You'll notice that here where I have a line there is no control handle coming off. You'll also notice that if I click on a curve left click hold down drag I start to change the curve shape. However, if I click left with my left mouse button hold down on a line segment and start to move, I move the entire line segment. It's not flexible. And you want to be aware of that when you're working with your vector, as I said. Now, one of the things you also want to be aware of is the state status of our nodes. This node is currently set to a cusp. If I change this node to smooth node, you'll notice that it changes so that the curve on the line beneath comes smoothly out of the straight line segment here. But if I change it back to a cusp, I'll be able to move it. You'll also notice if I left click, hold down, I can't change the rotation of that control handle. But if I click on cusp, I can do that. As you can see right there, I'll go ahead and left click here and convert this to a curve also. Not left click, but right click. And we'll take this and we'll change the direction of that curve also and then we can come here and we'll take a look at smooth node. Now a smooth node basically holds the axis of rotation of both of the control arms the same but you can still move one in and out and that node is in a smooth state right now. Now if I go up here and click on symmetrical node you notice that all I can do is rotate the arms. I cannot just pull one in and the other one stays the same. Everything is symmetrical. If I bring both of the control arms in, they both come in. If I rotate them, they mirror each other in rotation. So looking at that, we want to be aware of the states of the nodes and what we're dealing with when we're working with lines. Because if I wanted to make this a sharp curve down here, because I was working on something in vector and I couldn't do it, I would realize I'd need to change the status of this node to a cusp and then I could bring a sharp curve in down here. We also want to remember that 
we have status of our line segments. So we'll change this to a line. And if we want to try and do something with this relating to giving it a curved shape, we're going to have to convert it to a curve, just like that. Now, working with basic vector objects like this, at this point in time, because this is not a closed object, I cannot apply a fill to it or give it a color. I can give it an outline color because I've got a line, but I can't fill it. In order for a vector object to be filled in CorelDRAW, it must be closed. I'll go ahead and get my Bezier tool, come over this node, click again, that'll attach that, and I'm just going to close this as just some vector shape. Now once I close this, you'll see that the fill is applied. But if my lines are broken apart, I'll right click here and select break apart. No fill has been applied. Now what did I just do there? I just broke those that node apart because these two nodes were joined to one node and you'll notice that as they're apart there's no fill. I can start to edit this very differently but if I left click and drag this over it'll snap to and become joined to the other node. I release that and I'll have my fill applied to my object. So we want to be aware of all of these different things even though they're a little bit complex in getting started if you experiment with them for a few minutes you'll very quickly become familiar with how the lines and nodes work in CorelDRAW once again we were working with the Bezier tool in this session go ahead and wrap here and we'll continue in our next session